All right, it's time for Platinum Aatrox, and unfortunately, I'm top lane because I can't seem want to be allowed to jungle. This entire week, I just haven't jungled at all. Fish two, except that one Cossack game, but that's a whole different story. I've been forced to top lane mostly because my teammates want to play the jungle because they want to lock in Jarvan because he's the most overpowered guy right now, apparently. Nonetheless, top lane Aatrox is still good. Fans have been asking me since that Cannon game the other day. Stonewall, what do you think about Aatrox right now? Does he need a buff? Hell no. If the meta had to is switches to something that supports split pushers or top laners that just sit there all day without teleport, then Aatrox is going to be too dominating and buffing him now is just going to make him crazy when that time comes. Either way though, this is supposed to be a negative matchup for Aatrox, but two, thing, two key things to notice. One, the Riven goes too aggro before she gets level 3, so her power spike is not there. And second, she has no Ignite, so there's no way she would win this fight. So right now, it was a level 2 fight. Uh, in a level 2 fight, Aatrox would probably just, you know, well, definitely wins against the Riven. But, uh, especially if she has no Ignite. At level 3, the Riven should have probably destroyed me, but she didn't wait at that until that time. Fortunately for me, uh, I now have two items over her. As you can see though, by the amount of damage the Riven de de just dealt here, if if she hadn't been so careless early on, she w could have gone control of this entire lane. But that one defeat, that allowing me to get a Vampiric Scepter so early, is going to resonate in such terrible ways. My sustain is already starting to hit through and you know shoot through the roof. Look at me, I'm near full health just by stabbing minions. I'm maxing out my W, of course, so I can get, you know, the maximum of sustain. And my entire goal this game is to split push to the point where the Riven is going to be forced to stay top lane or where they're going to have to send more uh, more of their teammates to stop me. Look, the Riven, yeah, she can punish me all she wants, but I'm just going to heal myself back up. Uh, it's just not going to gain her too much. And any lucky shots I get at her will will pretty much uh, seal the deal here. I'm just waiting for the perfect moment to jump in and destroy her. I can burst her down. Well, not exactly burst her down, but do enough damage to pretty much destroy her. Like right here, boom, jump in and choose my W purple blade thing. I don't even know what it's called to deal some good ass damage. And she's just slowly being chipped away at. And any wrong move by her like uh, getting aggressive for CS I mean is going to result in her death and like she should be very wary of this I'm just looking for an opportunity to hurt her or kill her now uh, like I said Aatrox is definitely viable right now if you like playing Aatrox then go ahead and play them you just have to know of course the matchup and what kind of team comp you should go for like if your team comp is full on uh, you know uh, early aggression, then Aatrox is probably not the champion you want because he kind of needs to get rolling first before he starts t dominating. If your team is not a team that pushes hard, then you probably don't want Aatrox. Uh, if your team is not very dependent, I mean independent, then you probably again don't want Aatrox. Your goal is pretty much to split push. Like I said, if the meta were to uh, switch over to a split pushing meta, then Aatrox would definitely be, you know, in the vogue right now. Uh, it just happens it isn't. It, right now the, the top lane meta is like really fat champions or something with CC that can teleport at a moment's notice and join the fray. AKA uh, Nar, Lissandra, and stuff like that. Uh, this Riven though took teleport, which I really think was a huge mistake. Again, if she had Ignite, she probably would have killed me and dominated the lane. Like I, like her matchup would have implied, uh, caught, like her matchup would have granted her. And like I said, if my teammate, if my teammates can hold down the fort, if they can win team fights or at least not lose them, then I should be able to, uh, incur well not encourage, force the enemy team to send more players top lane. Because uh, look, you can see here, the Riven at this point can no longer fight me. She's just free kills for me. I can go super aggro. I can pick up any free kills I want. There's nothing she can do to stop me, no matter how much she tries. They need to send more players to stop me. So that means my teammates can go for all the objectives or push other towers. On the other hand, the enemy team could just try to stop my team, but that would just let me take towers for very little resistance. In this case, I, I just have to poke the tower for a little bit and then just go home because I want to buy upgrades to my items. Like, I should probably pick up some boots, right? Just so I can move slightly faster. So, 
And that, that also brings up the other uh, question. A lot of my play, uh, viewers have noticed that I don't take teleport very much as, top, as a top laner. Even if I play top lane champions that would normally want teleport or normally have been seen using teleport, like Gragas or, uh, well, Gragas mostly. Uh, and the reasoning for that is this. And I, I've, I've grown accustomed to not always trusting my teammates. It doesn't mean I, you know, I think they're automatically bad. I'm just like, I cannot rely on the perfect situations uh, for which uh, a strategy with ma many variables uh, would need. Like uh, my teammates, actually, I'll, I'll bring that up in a second. Here's the team fight here. The enemy team catches the Anivia and the, like the, the fight takes way too long and they should kind of realize that they were going to be forced on upon. Or uh, I came in as Aatrox and they CC'd me down and they attacked me and it's like my revive takes a long time. In the meantime, my other teammates are able to position themselves to arrive in time and get a good combo going. It results in three of them dying just for my life. Four in total of theirs died for essentially nothing. We also got a tower out of this and Anivia gets a blue buff. The enemy, again... If you can kill an enemy, it has to be quick. If you prolong the death of an opponent, it gives the ch the enemy team uh, the chance to regroup or f get to their teammate, or you know, gives them incentive to potentially want to save their team. I was like, oh, you know, he's not dying fast enough. I could probably show up to save him, something like that. Now, as I was saying. Uh, the reason why I take Ignite is because I can't fully trust my, my teammates or the situation to arise in most games. Teleport, most of the time I've seen players just use it to get back into the lane. You know, go, you get pushed out of lane, just go home, heal back up and buy some items, teleport back top lane, end of story. Or go farm top and then just teleport at some random point to join your friends when you're pushing or something. Yeah, that's, that's fine and all. Only on rare occasions have I seen players actually, uh, no, yeah, I've actually seen players use it effectively for combat or anything. By the way, here, once again, the Riven, I guess, tried to do some aggression on me, but it turns out she really, really can't do a damn thing. Honestly, if she CC'd me or fought me under the tower, she would have probably won, but, eh. anyways. Uh, a lot of players have used teleport and they haven't used it, you know, to, to assist gank or to show up at a moment's notice. They're kind of lazy. They kind of use it in their early games just for farming, just for going back into their lane. They don't see, uh, like, a level 3 opportunity. Oh, the enemy team is pushed out so far ahead at bottom lane, I could teleport behind them and we could probably get a kill. No, they don't see it. They just kind of wait around top lane until they needed to go teleport back into their own lanes. So... And when I've taken it, sometimes I've wanted to teleport to help a gank, but my team plays too passively, or they don't have the wards, or just nothing happens, and I kind of feel like that teleport was wasted. I kind of see a situation in which my opponent, I, I got him down to a sliver of health, and I could have killed him with that ignite. So, like, I, I figured, why not just take ignite and make sure I win my lane, or make use of it in lane. I only take ignite if I figure I'm going to be able to kill somebody, or at least do something with it. I took Ignite on Aatrox because I wanted to, in case the Riven got aggressive on me, I could hopefully take her down with the Ignite or something like that. Uh, like with Garen, it's a necessity and it's the kind of the same logic, right? Just, it's the Ignite is something I can control. I can control the situation in which it will be useful for. And of course, it's generally a strong spell, so I, I just kind of don't know why people have something against it. But as you can see from the background of the game, my team just absolutely dominated them. The, the mistake that the Riven made early made the entire matchup a disadvantage I had null and void. So as Aatrox, I was able to dominate and complete pressure top lane and win the game that way. Hooray!